I'm here with one of the um, first ladies of Broadway, Jen Gambatis. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say the legend, but then I was like, ah, oh, then it'll make her that, seem like she's older than she is. That would have been overseating it. Where is the camera? Yeah, right that would have right been here. overseating it. Overseating it. <laughs> but don't, I'll take one of the first ladies. Yeah, That's don't, lovely. Don't sell yourself short. You have done a tremendous amount of work on Broadway. Um, but before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about your background and when you decided you wanted to become an actress. Sure. Um, so I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio, and um, I started doing summer drama camp in elementary school and kind of got as bitten by the bug, as yeah. they say. <laughs> um, and then it very distinctly, it was when I played Emily Webb in Our Town that I was felt really felt, mm -hmm. oh, I, I want to do this, do this. Did you meet any sort of resistance from family or were they no, so supportive and I was, for you? Yeah, I was nice. really, really, really blessed in that way. Um, they, they still kind of think the world of me. Well, that, well, that's good. <laughs> it's so funny, actually. Um, <laughs> on, I'm on this uh, Broadway Baby Mamas Facebook page, mm -hmm. which is like a community for us moms yeah. who are sometimes on Broadway. And one of them asked, like, what's the one thing you you learned from your mom? Like, the m main one thing. And I said, I just, she just it gave me a sense of, like, I, I'm just, I hung the moon, you mm. know? <laughs> That's great. It's nice. Yeah. Um, when did you look into coming to New York? Did you come to New York for a job, or did you graduate college and then come here and then start pounding the pavement? I came here for college. You did? So I came to NYU mm -hmm. and I specifically chose NYU because I knew that eventually I'd need to come to New York mm -hmm. and I thought, well, I might as well sort of learn uptown from downtown. Right. And um, Back then, you would know it from the Twin Towers. Yeah. You could get out of the subway and look for those beacons and know, okay, that's south. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, well, now we Now, I guess you it's back single. again. It's back yeah, it's again, back but again. it's not double. Not, not double. Yeah. Um, but that's, um, so yeah, I came, I was, I graduated high school in 1993 and mm -hmm. I came to NYU and, uh, and it was a great place. I mean, so many reasons it was great for yeah. me, the training, um, but really, truly, I think for me, acclimate, acclimating to the city. Because um, at the end, I think I was deciding between Northwestern and mm -hmm. NYU, and I love Chicago as well. But, you know, it just would have been one more sort of step. step. in between, yeah. Yeah, and thing to, to <laughs> hurdle to do. Were you nervous when you first came to New York, or were you just excited to be going to college, going to New York? I wasn't nervous. I mean, yeah. you know, young and dumb, right? Like, yeah. I was 17 <laughs> years old, and um, I was excited. I mean, you know, normal nervous, right, like, right. oh my gosh. But, but I think it would have been the same, I, I truly think it would have been the same if I'd gone to any university mm -hmm. or college, even back in Ohio. But um, but my dad likes to tell this story <laughs> <laughs> about so we, like loaded up the car, you know, it's all, all my gear. Yeah. And um, mom and I are getting it into the dorm and it's, you know, move-in day in a, at a school like NYU, it's tricky because mm -hmm. it's New York, you know, it's not a leisurely kind of thing. So he's sitting out there with the car, and somebody throws away a sandwich, and then he sees like three different people like take it and take a bite, yeah. and throw it back. He's like, it must have been a really, really bad, bad sandwich. sandwich. But it was real culture shock, mm -hmm. you know, that we didn't see that in the suburbs in Cleveland. Um, and he was like, I can't believe I'm I'm leaving my kid here, yeah. you know. But I just. Well, I'm I mean, sure he's I not sorry anymore. Things. I'm sure he, yeah. he's pretty proud of what you've done. <laughs> he is. They are. I'm very lucky. What were some of the things that you worked on in college? What were some of the uh, dramatic works? Yeah, well, so I always love to tell kids that I teach master classes to, mm -hmm. I did not get accepted into the musical theater program at NYU. Um, and I remember, again, I, all these memories. Yeah, did yeah, you know yeah. I'm going to like do all these fun <laughs> Mom and I drove from Cleveland in a snowstorm, a blizzard to my NYU audition mm -hmm. and I you know went to Tish and went in the room and I was like underwhelming at best like right, it was right, right. I was fine good enough to get in right. <laughs> <laughs> but not not good enough to get into to the musical theater studio at that time which wound up being like the greatest blessing mm -hmm. I, I wound up going into the circle in the square studio which mm -hmm. was an affiliate um, which they kind of called the smorgasbord studio so undergrad at NYU you've got like Stella Adler um, Lee Strasberg you've got mm -hmm. like all these different you know roads to Mecca I guess you could say yeah, yeah. and um, 
when they in the audition when they said well if you didn't get into to the musical theater studio where would you want to be and I said well I like the idea of that you know smorgasbord and because like I, you know I was from drama club in right, my high right. school like I didn't have training so I wanted to so in that studio you know I think our our one teacher was a little more Strasbourg. Our movement teacher was from the Adler world. So we got mm -hmm. like a little taste, yeah. but it was my Meisner teacher that just changed my life. Um, her name is Lori Peters, mm -hmm. and she actually was the original weasel in The Sound of Music. Oh, interesting. Yeah, isn't that wild? That's great, yeah. And, um, and she was a dancer for Balanchine. So that's when they discovered her for weasel. She was from the ballet world. Mm -hmm. Then then I wonder actually, I'd have to ask her, I, I re-found her um, back when I was doing Sound of Music at Lyric oh, Opera, wow. oh, cool. and I invited her and she came Yeah, to that's so cool. Yeah, it was really neat. Um, but I think what happened, maybe how she found Sandy Meisner was um, the, not the original Rolf, but the second Rolf was an actor named John Voight. That and nobody? <laughs> that guy, that hack. Who? Yeah. Um, and they were very young and they yeah. were in love and, and they married mm -hmm. for, a, they were married for a brief time. Um, but I think, it, I don't know if it was John or Lori, somehow they wound up at the Neighborhood Playhouse and studied with Sandy and um, she just changed everything for yeah. me. Everything. There's got to be nothing like being in a theater in New York in terms of being a performer. The energy, I mean, I know the energy is probably the same anywhere, but just New York has its own... It's not. It's its own thing. Yeah, it's not quite it's the not. same. Yeah. And even in the sense of like, I mean, you know, I've been on tour. Mm -hmm. um, I've played amazing places like the Chicago Lyric Opera, um, which are all incredible establishments, but there is something about the, the New York boards. Right. Like, and even like backstage, it's cramped and old and <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's not glamorous but like you can sort of feel the history in the walls yeah and the ghosts and, running around and, yeah inhabiting the place yeah it's, it's it's amazing yeah that's cool there's nowhere like new york i was just i didn't want you to down, <laughs> down any of the other places no offense with the, to anybody yeah, else. <laughs> nobody else but new york it's the bomb so talk about your first role on broadway was in um Footloose. yeah very good <laughs> what was that like booking your first broadway show it was amazing. Um, I remember the audition going in. Uh, so I, I replaced one of the, gosh, what were we called? The Beaumets. <laughs> because it takes place, right? Is that right? In, Makes me think of like a Matt Bomer like yeah. person. Like as somebody who's like a fan of his. Yeah, of well, Beaumet. that's true. <laughs> I mean, um, and who's what, not? Wait, wait. I, I'm now, gosh, it's because, well, it's been, that was, it's been 20 years, yeah. right? Yeah, it's 1999. Crazy. Um, so, but I was replacing, you know, one of, of Ariel's like buddies, mm -hmm. and but for some reason I, I was ballsy back then, and I just they had the sides for Ariel, and I just had them ready, and I went in, and then they were like, "Would you?" As I said, I thought you might ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that was just a, a real thrill, and. Um, and it was funny because I had gotten my equity card doing Fame, mm -hmm. so that was, I had done, done Fame in Europe and then the national tour, which was like my first uh, original cast album, mm -hmm. um, Gavin Creel. Yeah. That's how we got our equity cards together. Yeah. Um, and then I got Footloose, and then I almost I came really really close to getting Saturday Night Fever, which I always joke would have been like the Triple Crown, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like '80s movie yeah, yeah. musical. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was so much fun, and I I, I felt I was lucky in Footloose because um, I didn't that um, AC Sula uh, choreography mm -hmm. I didn't have to do it because right, right. they did they used to do this thing they call the backbreakers from their knee. Yeah like whipping their bodies up. I saw the show, actually. You I, did? I think I've seen every show that you've been in, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> Pretty close, if not all. <laughs> I've had some fun ones. I remember, yeah, I remember for this. Uh, yeah, you remember the shopping carts? I do. Somebody Mostly because of the men that were on the cover of the play, though. There was one who was particularly handsome. I don't remember oh, his name. Oh, yes. I want to um, say Miles, maybe? Casey Miles Good. <laughs> yes, that's him. <laughs> Hi, Casey. Hi, Casey. <laughs> he went to college with my husband. Um, yeah, he was screamy. He was uh, the, one of the Chuck understudies. Mm -hmm. So I got to smooch him at understudy yeah. rehearsal. That's really why I wanted to interview. I wanted to know what it all was <laughs> all like. All the boys I got to smooch. <laughs> uh, and you also did Hairspray, which yeah. was a huge, huge deal. Yeah, huge. What was that experience like? That show was, you know, a fun 
just ex it was just an explosion of fun and it was so much fun as a viewer to watch yeah but as a performer what was it like every night going in and you, you played penny so well i started Did out you? as brenda the nicest kid in town who and goes away for nine months yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and i understudied penny mm -hmm. um, and i'm gonna go see her tonight i'm going to see beetlejuice tonight so i'm gonna see carrie tonight that's so cool um so i had Actually, the first reading that I participated in for Hairspray was when I was still in Footloose. Mm -hmm. And the, we would do a reading every six months for two years, um, which, and it was really kind of like clockwork because at the time, I don't know if it's the same now, but if the producers waited six months, mm -hmm. they could do another 29 hour reading, which, you know, they only have to pay you so much. And right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, in a way, we sort of workshopped the show without having a proper workshop contract, mm -hmm. which is, was a bummer yeah. because that would have been some nice yeah, extra cash. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs money? It's just, it's uh, um, and because we really were, I think, and, and, and the creators are, are always so kind to say mm -hmm. like how instrumental we all were in, in that, in, in what wound up right. being on stage. Um, so yeah, it was, it was just such a thrill. I mean, there were a number of us who had done the readings. Mm -hmm. So again, like we had, didn't really have, we weren't dancing in the readings. So I'm trying to remember if there was an audition with the Jerry Mitchell choreography, there must have been. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all wound up being said yes. And, but thankfully, because it was like, not like real Broadway dancing. It was right, like Corny right. Collins, Hullabaloo <laughs> style dancing, um, which was funny because it would always th like kind of throw the real dancers in the cast mm -hmm. because it was Jerry so brilliant and it was like just kids dancing. So a lot of ponying, but a lot of like same arm, same leg yeah, thing yeah. with You Can't Stop the Beat. Uh -huh. And real dancers never do same arm, right, same right. leg. <laughs> He was ruining them. So we, we were in a blast, but I think, you know, it was just, it was a blast from start to finish. Yeah. Um, we went out to Seattle, did it at the Fifth Avenue, and f I mean, we all knew f from the readings, from any presentations we did that like, okay, this is something special, just yeah. the score alone, the music Absolutely. alone. Then we get to Seattle, you know, Jack O'Brien, mm -hmm. you know, putting it on its feet, and it, the first preview was like electric, so that the next day, it, Jack O'Brien's quite famous for his amazing note mm -hmm. sessions. They're just like, <laughs> it's like, oh, captain, my captain. <laughs> He's so inspiring and so specific. But that, that note session, the day after that first preview, he said, I need this, a lot of you, this is like your first Broadway show or one of or your first originating, mm -hmm. not replacing. This is not normal. This is not what this is like. I, I think he was really nervous that we were so young and going to be like, oh, this is what it is right, to right. try out a new show. And it, as we all know, because <laughs> we've seen many previews right, right. or been in many previews, it's not the case. Um, so, yeah, it was just, you know, you had Harvey at the helm, like our mother hen. Mm -hmm. And that, that original ensemble, like I always say the bench was so deep, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it was Shoshana Bean, Shana Steele, Camille Martin. Yeah. You know, like amazing, amazing. More Broadway royalty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And what was it like going into a show like that that really um, hit a mark with fans? I, I can imagine going out of the stage door every night that you guys were able to see the impact, other than the curtain call where everybody, you know, was standing for you. You got to really speak with the audience members. Yeah, it was... Um, it was such a ride. Mm -hmm. I mean, f from the audience and themselves, and then also just opportunities that first year. You know, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade mm -hmm. and the Rockefeller Tree Lighting Ceremony, and it was just quite heady, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think we were all so young, and um, I mean, not all of us, right? Like Dick Latessa, may he rest right. in peace. I yeah. remember him saying, "Another Cleveland boy," and he was, and even though we'd like, you know, killed in Seattle. Mm -hmm people were all like decorating their dressing rooms and he's like, don't you people know, never decorate your dressing room until the reviews are That's out. Right. <laughs> That's but funny. it was this amazing, you know, you had these like mm -hmm. veterans like him, um, a bunch of newbies and we just had the best time and the people, it did, it, it, it struck a chord with people in a number of ways, uh, in joy, mm -hmm. like to be a part of something that was just like brought 
like unadulterated joy mm -hmm. into people's lives. Yeah. That was amazing. But also, uh, you know, the story that it was telling and how powerful and profound and mm -hmm. thinking like, okay, this John Waters wrote this based on his childhood in mm -hmm. Baltimore, or, you know, not based on it, but you know, he was watching a show that was that had Negro Day. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't that long ago. Right. It wasn't that long ago. And I think Jack always impressed upon us like, you know, this this was just the blink of an eye right, ago right. and and look how far we've come and I know where we've been and yeah. all of it. Yeah, it was a great show. Yeah. You did All Shook Up and then Tarzan. Yes. Which you were the lead. Uh, there was actually one before that. So I left um, Hairspray mm -hmm. after, ironically, after nine months. Because that yeah, was not. <laughs> and <laughs> Taking I, the role of heart. And I went and did Frog and Toad, a year uh -huh. with Frog and Toad. Right. And so that was amazing fun. And then, amazing fun until the Tony Awards, actually. Because I was in two nominated shows in the same season, Hairspray uh, and Frog and yeah, Toad. Yeah. But I didn't perform. I still have yet to perform on the Tony Awards. Really? Yeah, um, because Frog and Toad, there was only five of us, mm -hmm. and we were going to do um, Toad Looks Funny in a Bathing Suit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get a load of Toad. <laughs> 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 I remember the choreography. But then at the last minute, they changed their mind and just decided to do this duet with just Frog and Toad. Mm -hmm. So, you know, me and the snail with the male and Daniel Furland was the turtle, we were out what of luck. Bummer. It was such a bummer. <laughs> so I remember sitting, actually went, and they didn't really, it was a small, tiny, beautiful show, Frog mm -hmm. and Toad, so they didn't have like a party or anything. So, But I was invited to the Hairspray party. So mom and I went and we sat at the table and I watched like both my cast. <laughs> <laughs> Performing oh, on the Tonys, and um, yeah, it was kind of trippy. And 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 oh gosh, and I was sitting at the table with Joe Mahota, who's now like very very fancy, mm -hmm. but he had done Footloose on the Road, and we had done the Little Women workshop together. Right. So and he was just sort of I think starting as an agent at CAA. Yeah, I was going to say he's an agent now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah big time. Yeah. Um, and but yeah, it's not funny. It so is. so yeah, Frog and Toad, and then I guess I then I went back to Hairspray as Penny, mm -hmm. so that was cool, and then I got All Shook Up, and then after All Shook Up, Tarzan. So it was a that was a huge Disney musical. You and and Josh were fantastic together, Aww. the the singing and the performing and and just the visual beauty the of it. Of yeah, it. the whole spectacle of it was was stunning. What was that like working? On a, on a show like that? That was, it was amazing. Well, first of all, um, I really credit Disney for really teaching me how to be a leading lady. Mm -hmm. I'd already done it as originating All Shook Up, mm -hmm. but that was not the same sort of, um, you know, entity behind you. So like they gave Josh and I media training, mm -hmm. um, uh, they took us shopping yeah. at Saks Fifth Avenue for what we would wear for mm -hmm. interviews. It was a real education, and I'm always so grateful to them for that. Um, it was hard uh, because it was such a big show, and we rehearsed it for three months um, at the Brooklyn Navy Yards mm -hmm. because there wasn't a space large enough in the city where they could replicate that um inflatable wall right right so they that we didn't swing into <laughs> <laughs> um and I, again i also always credit disney um you know especially after there were uh, those things that happened at spider-man mm -hmm. with the flying and all of that like mm -hmm. you know now we didn't i don't think we ran as long as spider-man but they were they were so safe yeah you know we had like our regular crew and then we had a crew of rock climbers they hired mm -hmm. these rock climbing guys from New Paltz. <laughs> Come on down from the gunks. <laughs> and, um, and like every time one of us was getting clipped in, because mm -hmm. the aerial was Peach on Valdenu from De La Guarda, Fruits right. Bruta, Bruta. Um, So yeah, it was, it was awesome and really hard work. And, um, and then, you know, we, we didn't run that long. So that was a, a disappointment, um, but it did then go on. They they made some changes and it, it ran for ten years in, mm -hmm. in Europe. So um, so yeah, I mean, there's always the highs and the lows. Yeah, <laughs> that's with every career, right? Now, 
What is one role that you had auditioned for, whether it be for a musical or a play that you did not get that you were really disappointed and really thought that that would be, not your big break, but would be something you really could showcase yeah. yourself. Not that your other projects didn't showcase you. No, no, no. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me think. Um, so, like, very recently, I um, went in for Waitress. Mm -hmm. uh, my best friend is now playing Jenna, the waitress. And initially, I'd gone in for Jenna. And even when I went in, I was like, ugh. That's a big thing with two kids because now I got have two kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but I love, but the part was amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, it was amazing. But it's funny, like, the longer you're in the business and you know, like, sort of what it takes to deliver eight times a week. And at the beginning of my career, when it was only myself that I had to worry about, mm -hmm. um, you know, you just got as much sleep as you needed. You, you know that was it well now there's like lunches to pack in the morning and yeah. so like when I was doing School of Rock it's you know that was a great role because I was the leading lady but I wasn't sort of like carrying the show mm -hmm. it's more like a wonderful feature yeah. <laughs> <laughs> singing wise you know so I could do it on you know six seven hours of sleep yeah. so anyways I'd gone in initially for Jenna um, and was not surprised to not get called back because I think I even went in the room and like I don't know <laughs> <laughs> but then they called me back in for Dawn. And even when I first saw the show, I went to see my friend Will Swenson was playing the mm -hmm. mean husband. I was like, oh, that's a great part. That's a great part. Yeah. Um, and I went in and I, 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 I got caught in traffic driving in. Like they knew I was coming. They're like, if she can get here by this time, mm -hmm. you know, okay. And I kind of like went in the room and I thought maybe that sort of frazzled nervous energy might translate well, but I think, you know, it, it, it didn't, didn't go further. Yeah. And I still kind of think, I was like, oh, especially now that my best friend's yeah, in the part, yeah. I'm like, I would love to play that so part. Long, you still, you, hey, <laughs> until that show closes. FYI. You, that's what, yeah. A lot of people watch this interview. Yeah. Um, what, what but because, it, because I will say, um, I was just talking with Gavin about this the other day, actually. You know, again, like earlier on in my career, like you're sort of like in this kind of tunnel vision and in a rhythm with like auditioning and like, you know, then you kind of get to a different level mm -hmm. and the auditions actually become less because there's less that there's less leading parts right. that you're, you know, and again, this is a very privileged position to say this because mm -hmm. I can be choosy because my husband left the business yeah. and has a regular <laughs> job. Good move, hubby. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I'm very aware that like I'm, I get frustrated of, at like sort of lack of opportunities, but it's, it's a, it's a frustrating, you know, and I do a little teaching and, and right. this and that, but I, I have the luxury of being able to be home with my kids mm -hmm. and, and, you know. So anyway, so where was I going with this? Yeah, that, oh, that I was saying to Gavin, it's like, it does make it hard auditioning. When you don't have as many auditions, you're kind of like rusty. Mm -hmm. So it's like, <laughs> you don't wanna be like, I'm offer only. Right. That's right. <laughs> Except that like, you almost get to a point where you're like, trust me, like right, I right. swear to God I can do this and I can deliver, but like you should just, <laughs> just <honor it> me. <laughs> because swirling it up for the audition is, yeah. is so much harder as, as my mom. You, spe you speak about Gavin. Yeah. Um, it's so funny how many actors are here in New York, but um, you're all, there's just like a, a core group of you that have done so many things, Gavin, I know you're friends with Andrew Rannells, yeah. and, and are in his book, which was, yeah. the, <laughs> I was there at his, the Barnes and Noble event, oh. and it was so funny to see all these people that you had no idea that were connected, yeah. but that you've been a fan of their work this whole time, yeah. and it's just so strange when the, all those worlds collide. So what was, what's it like being in a book? <laughs> that was That's really trippy. Own. That's not my own, yeah. No, I'm so proud of him, yeah. and it's so funny, and it was really, like, I don't know, what was it like? An, it was trippy, it was an honor, but also like just the memories come flooding back because yeah. we had met in Summerstock, right, right. you know, before. And, 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 and realizing that like, so I, I, I've tended to always play, you know, younger than I am. So like the bulk of that early part of my career was, you know, I was really castable because I was playing teenagers. Right. Um, 
and he's you know obviously he's doing fine now but like right. and he's tall and leading man handsome and and his path like was different and longer and so to read in the book of like how on the one hand you know like my path was like inspiring but mm -hmm. it, it was hard you yeah. know I remember him teaching him the choreography for hairspray for his hairspray audition and um and going to see him in Pokemon Live. <laughs> so, I mean, a lot, but there were things in there that I didn't know. Oh, I was just so proud of him. But, but yeah, that group, um, so this is a spill the tea a little. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he wrote a whole book about it. He wrote a book, so, yeah. So you can spill whatever you want. <laughs> well, they're friends because of me. So, um, so I was in Footloose with Sean Dooley, mm -hmm. and I had done Fame with Gavin, and Michael Selvach was in Footloose as well with us, and then Andrew was my summer stock buddy. So we would, and for a minute, for a minute, okay, wait, Michael, Andrew, Gavin, and I lived in the same apartment building wow. on 45th and 9th above yeah. Smiler's Deli. We called it Theatrical Melrose Place. <laughs> <laughs> we all had studio apartments. Sean yeah. somehow escaped that, but he was like always there. Um, and they, so they, they kind of became friends from mm -hmm. me. So they, so, so Gavin um, called me Haglius, like, <laughs> which it, I, maybe you could try, I feel yeah. embarrassed to say it, but like, like a fag hag, like yeah, the yeah. center. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I was the Haglius and I, I, I just rolled my eyes, but Andrew would say, no, <laughs> she is far too personality plus <laughs> and attractive to be ugly. I can't imagine the three of you larger than life personalities all in one room. It must be. Oh, they were fun wrenches. It was always it was Westway Diner, mm -hmm. Westway Diner, like you know before Saturday matinee with. Um, yeah, I didn't call myself Hagley, so but with oh, me and no. the boys. But we actually, the, I think one of my favorite memories is we all, we did a road trip to Cleveland. Mm -hmm. We stopped at my parents' house and we went to Cedar Point Amusement Park. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we were gay bash, well, well, and I had my hair super pixie short, so I probably was gay bashed as well, yeah. <laughs> in, in assumption <laughs> um, But it was me and the boys and um, this like van of, um, not nice Christians mm -hmm. <laughs> came by and like um like gay bashed us. That's crazy. Yeah. But we had a great day at Cedar Point. Oh, sure. Good luck doing that to Andrew now. I'm pretty sure his mouth would probably open pretty quickly. From oh. from all that I know and seen oh, about him yeah. and just I mean just he always has book a, sign, a doesn't good, seem like he has any quick, problem. Sharing. Quick retort, yeah. 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 So, Anyways. So you know, you you're juggling motherhood while also, uh, you said you were teaching, right? Yeah, I do master classes mm -hmm. for different organizations. I have a couple private um, students up in Westchester. I wrote a children's book. I'm gonna That's be amazing. getting that out into the world. What's it called? It's called My Sister is a Pterodactyl. Nice, very <laughs> cool. What inspired you to write a book? What inspired me was when I had my second, mm -hmm. and she's about four months old, and I remembered her, my oldest, going through the same thing. It's like when they find their voice, mm -hmm. and, they, and mine, well, especially the second, found a loud voice, <laughs> and they kind of sound like dinosaurs. And so it was something I started with my big girl, mm -hmm. Josephine, and we kind of wrote wrote the story together. Um, and and yeah, so that's awesome. Get that out in the world. How does that feel to teach? I, I I know probably when you were starting out, like you said, you had professors and and teachers that you look up to, and and to this day credit with where you are. What is that like to be in that role for someone else? It's, it's a, a privilege, it really is, um, and something that I don't take lightly because I know how much um, words matter. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in, in some, you know, academic institutions, like there can be this um, sort of philosophy of like, like break them down to build them up. And, mm -hmm. and I think that can be so damaging, mm -hmm. you know, because life will break people down right. anyways. It's coming anyway. So I mean I think it's important to be to to sh to be straight mm -hmm. with somebody and like tell them you know good criticism but you know to half of this game of being an actor is <laughs> just keeping going and, right. and not letting that self doubt and that voice in your head right. you know so I, I look at my job when I'm teaching as you know beyond craft and technique mm -hmm. and all of that like uh, it's a it's a 
psychological kind Absolutely. of, you know. Well, and you can be empathetic to them yeah. because you went through it. And, I'm still and, going through it. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> and also, like, in what industry do you really get treated, or, or maybe not treated poorly, but if you're not exactly what they're looking for, it, it's got to, like, really grate on you after a while and really yeah. damage your psyche because it's like, you may feel like, oh, it's me that's the problem, but it's like you may not be right for the role. So there's just a whole It's all of level. that. It's all of that. And um, yeah, I mean, and, and, and so sort of kind of fighting the good fight within yourself mm -hmm. when, you know, it's been a minute or you're not getting the callbacks and, and being open, you know, you mm -hmm. have to be open to, okay, am I off my game? And, and, and hopefully, you know, you get... Uh, representatives in a right. team that can be like no the feedback is is great it's just it's just not you mm -hmm. it's it's just the redhead or it's just you know there's so many things there's so many reasons, out yeah. of your control yeah so um so yeah so i love it and i but i love i love when i'm teaching you know seeing them connect the dots mm -hmm. and and i've really found um Interestingly, I, I think it goes back to Lori Peters and, and then my voice teacher, I studied with him for 15 years, Steve Sweetland, he's still teaching, he moved back to LA, he's teaching out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they were so instrumental in, in, in leading me to figure it out for myself in a way, kind of like a good therapist mm -hmm. in a way. So like I find myself, so like, you know, you do the vocal exercise, mm -hmm okay, what did you notice? What was that like? So that it was always me doing the assessing, mm -hmm. you know? So I love doing that now. It's like like leading this Socratic, <laughs> right, right. like asking the questions and, and sometimes it's hard or sometimes we're like, I don't know. And I said, that's it. That's an okay answer. Mm -hmm. I don't know is, is fair. Um, yeah. yeah, it's fun. It's and and fun. being part of the theater community, there's always opportunities to do shows outside of an actual show yeah, show benefits, benefits and concerts, and, concerts and, mm -hmm. and especially in New York there's such a, yeah. a desire for it and in so many places you can do them yeah and 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 it's always I think when I'm doing those it's like the people that you meet like so actually so we're, we're downtown right now we're downtown <laughs> um, and not far from Pace University the mm -hmm. Schimmel Center right and I've done a couple concerts there wonderful venue um, but you know the gal who asked me, Deb Weiner, like I, she, I love her. I had met her at 92nd Street Y, lyrics and lyricists. But now I got to meet John Otto. He he's the MD, mm -hmm. and and he was Rosemary Clooney's musical director for nice. you know like 20 years. Yeah. Like it's it's cool. Like I I I love I love what I do. That's so And the people that I get to meet. And and you mentioned it's been a long career already for you you started so young and now you're, <laughs> and now you're just ancient uh, I mean, and like you're still excited for because yeah. if you think about it 20 people who are at their jobs 20 25 years probably the it's a bit of a grind maybe. Yeah. yeah and i'm sure the you know looking for yeah. something new when as an actor you get to reinvent yourselves and do different yeah. parts and you're it's always something and new, that's so. the blessing and the, and the curse, curse. Yeah. and the hard part yeah but yeah, no, I still, I still, honest God, love it. And I look at, I tell my husband, you know, because like, okay, so now we're like technically middle aged. I don't mm -hmm. feel it, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's like, okay, so you know, you look ahead. What would, what, what does retirement look like for right. us, especially now that he left the business? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I don't, I'm, I don't want to. I, I, I want to be Mary Beth Peel. I want to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Angela Lansbury, like, yeah, like, I mean, like, doesn't get better than go out, than like, that. Keep, yeah. keep doing what you love, you know. That's amazing, and with theater and and having the credits that you have, I'm sure you will be acting until we'll see until then. We'll see. <laughs> we'll have another interview in your assisted living facility. <laughs> <laughs> Looking up in another 25, 30 years, <laughs> we'll do a, we'll oh do a longer my one. Gosh. Jen, thank you so much for taking oh, the time. Oh, thanks for me. asking me. It was such me. a pleasure interviewing this is you. It's really, really fun. Yeah, it was fun for me too. Yay. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a good night. You too.